Hello friends and family and welcome to the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. For those of you who are friends of friends, a uh, quick reminder that this is not meditation instruction and I am not a meditation teacher. This is just a discussion about the periphery of meditation. Today I wanted to discuss the far periphery, <laughs> uh, which is the cosmology of uh, the systems of meditation that we engage in. This um, series of videos has been primarily about anapan meditation and to a much lesser extent about vipassana meditation, mostly the recommendation that you try vipassana meditation. I, I can't speak to vipassana meditation very directly um, for anyone who hasn't tried it. Uh, but these techniques uh, anapan and vipassana, they come from uh, they come from a certain lineage, and I have to be very careful with my words here. Um, the understanding, both in uh, a lot of academic history as well as mythology, is that these meditation techniques were taught by the Buddha, uh, Gautam Buddha in about 500 or 600 BC, and that they have been passed down from monk to monk to us in the present day. And because there are sects of Buddhism which have arisen from that time period, there is Buddhist, uh, whether sectarian or non-sectarian, cosmology associated with the uh, space, with the ecosystem. Um, and the cosmology is, uh, I think, a, a tempting distraction. <laughs> it is a tempting distraction from meditation um, because it's colorful and it's full of stories and, uh, and a sort of mythology um, that mirrors any other religion and it actually has a deep intersection with the Hindu religion. Um, and I think that there is a good way for us to bring ourselves back from the tempting Dungeons and Dragons mythology world of cosmology to the reality that we are attempting to explore in meditation. And the reality of meditation is that we have some mental state at any given point in time. And that mental state may be a high mental state. We may be elated. We may be in ecstasy, bliss, tranquility, or it may be a low mental state. Uh, we may be hating someone. We may be angry. We may be extremely sad. We may be uh, unbearably anxious. And there is a, a wide spectrum of mental states and emotional states between these the peaks and valleys, right? Um, but essentially, Buddhist cosmology and really any cosmology um, can be seen in this way that heaven is, uh, is a, an abstract notion of our true day-to-day -day mental states, mental states of peace, um, happiness, and tranquility. These, these ideas can be thought of as heaven on earth, as it were. And the lower mental states of anger and aversion and deep craving and envy and jealousy and all of these things, um, those are hell. This is hell on earth where we experience these feelings um, and we are burning. Uh, it often feels like burning quite viscerally, right? Um, I would encourage you to frame cosmology 
in this way that oh, okay if i'm thinking about <laughs> if i'm thinking about devas or angels or demons or the people or creatures who live on these different uh, spheres or planets or loka um, that you think of them in terms of yourself how are my thoughts and emotions um, fitting into the cosmology if the cosmology is self-relative that um, it's entirely possible for me within this life i mean maybe not right now i can't just jump between uh, these different emotional states and mental states um, but i can certainly feel wildly different things and to some extent i can guide the way that i feel um, throughout these different states that um, you can bring that idea of cosmology to your meditation if you if you want and that you certainly do not need to um, but that in the interest of practicing meditation with um, with a clear focus on only what is real so if we are keeping out any imagination any construction anything artificial that includes our beliefs so if we believe in heaven or we believe in hell or we believe in uh, hungry ghosts <laughs> or any other component of any cosmology um, it is important for us to leave that aside in our meditation and not mix it up with our meditation if we want to think about one of these ideas we can think about it during our meditation or, or around our meditation exclusively in terms of mental states and the meditation object remains the breath so I'm bringing my attention to the breath I have my attention on the breath and then my attention wanders away all right where did my attention wander oh an angry state of mind well that's a hell state of mind for some value of hell right momentary hell to be angry at someone or to be angry with myself and so I bring myself out of hell and back to somewhere calm somewhere peaceful simply the breath there's um, nothing to say about the breath in terms of where it fits in the cosmological system it just is it, it's a real thing that you are meditating on um, I, uh, I only bring this up because it came up in my life uh, somewhat tangentially um, and so I thought that it would be a valuable thing to um, mention as a topic I don't think that it is something that we should dwell on in these videos these videos are uh, largely about um, this collective global difficult situation we're all in and the anxiety that we feel but anxiety again is a lower mental state and that we want to try to lift ourselves out of this mental state if possible and this tool of the breath is one way to do that to bring ourselves back away from this tiny temporary hell of anxiety or maybe a very large hell um, it's hard to say um, it's different for everybody to feel anxious at different times and i would encourage you to to keep doing this to keep bringing yourself lifting yourself out of this uh out of this state out of this uh um, sphere mental sphere uh again because there are folks watching this video who uh, do not know me directly um, i will include links to the instructions for installing anapan meditation on your iphone or android phone at the end of this video i hope they're helpful for you i hope you're taking care of yourselves your family your friends your friends are friends i will talk to you tomorrow goodbye